Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on refraction and lenses. The topic of this video is total internal reflection, and we want to know what is total internal reflection and what are the conditions under which it occurs. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the boundary behavior of waves, and I've left a link to that video in the description section of this one if you need to review it. We learned that when an incident wave or incident pulse approaches the boundary with a second material, that a portion of the energy that it carries to the boundary will reflect off that boundary and remain in the original material, and a portion of the energy is transmitted across the boundary into the second material. This is illustrated in the repeating animation that you see displayed on this slide. There's a few terms from this video that we need to know in order to understand this video. First of all, the incident pulse is the pulse that is approaching the boundary. And once that incident pulse reaches the boundary, a portion of its energy is reflected and shows up as the reflected pulse. And a portion of the energy is, is carried across the boundary and shows up as the transmitted pulse. The lessons learned about the boundary behavior of waves can and should be applied to the behavior of light waves at a boundary, though we typically use a ray model of light to represent the behavior of light at a boundary. In such a model, a ray diagram is employed in which a ray is drawn perpendicular to the wave fronts that are approaching the boundary. Here we see a ray diagram showing an incident ray in air approaching the boundary with glass. Once that incident ray reaches the boundary, a portion of its its energy would reflect off the boundary and remain within the air, and a portion of its energy would transmit across the boundary and show up in the glass. In order to draw the reflected portion of this light wave, we would have to employ the law of reflection, which states that the reflected ray would be an equal distance from the normal line to the boundary as the incident ray is. Here we see the reflected ray of light bouncing off of the air-glass boundary. The light that transmits across the boundary would not follow along a straight line path as shown here, but instead would refract either towards or away from the normal line and in accord with Snell's law of refraction. In the case of light traveling from air to glass, the refraction occurs towards the normal line and the refracted ray would be located approximately here. What we want to learn in this video is what variables affect the amount of reflection and the amount of refraction that occurs at the boundary, and under what conditions would the light ray approaching that boundary undergo 100% or total reflection. This repeating animation depicts an incident ray traveling through air and approaching the boundary with water. There's a number of things that we can learn from watching this animation, but there's a few that I want to highlight. First, I want you to notice that when the angle of incidence is 15 degrees, that the reflected ray is hardly visible whatsoever. And when the angle of incidence is 30 degrees, you can see the reflected ray, but it's very, very dim. At an angle of incidence of 45 degrees, the incident ray is visible and dim. At an angle of incidence of 60 degrees, we begin to see a rather bright reflected ray. And at an angle of incidence of 75 degrees, the reflected ray is the brightest of all the reflected rays. This animation provides evidence to support the following claims. First, as the angle of incidence is increased, the angle of reflection is also increased. And as the angle of incidence is increased, the angle of refraction is also increased. But the two points to really highlight from this animation is that as the angle of incidence is increased, the reflected ray becomes brighter and brighter and brighter. And as the angle of incidence is increased, the refracted ray becomes dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. Now let's reverse the situation and have the incident ray in the more dense water heading towards the less dense air. We would expect many of the same behaviors with the exception that the refraction occurs away from the normal line since light is traveling from the more dense water to the less dense air. At an angle of incidence of zero degrees, the light passes straight across the boundary without bending. We see a really bright refracted ray and a hardly visible reflected ray. But at 15 degrees angle of incidence, the refraction occurs at 20 degrees and is a little dimmer than before. The, the reflected ray 
occurs at 15 degrees and is a little brighter now. At an angle of incidence of 30 degrees, there's an angle of reflection at 30 degrees and a relatively brighter reflected ray and the angle of refraction is 42 degrees and the refracted ray is continuing to become dimmer and dimmer. At an angle of incidence of 45 degrees, we see a very dim refracted ray and a very bright reflected ray. And then finally, at an angle of incidence of 60 degrees, we notice that the reflected ray is really bright and has an angle of 60 degrees, but wouldn't you know, there's not even a visible refracted ray whatsoever. In fact, somewhere around an angle of incidence of 49 degrees, the angle of refraction would be 49 degrees, placing a very dim refracted ray along the boundary line. And at any angle of incidence greater than 49 degrees, the refracted ray totally disappears. We can conclude from these observations that as the angle of incidence is increased from zero degrees to greater and greater angles, eventually the angle of refraction reaches 90 degrees, and after that point, there's no refraction whatsoever. It's 100% reflection. That last slide illustrates the phenomenon of total internal reflection, or TIR for short. Total internal reflection is the phenomenon that occurs when all of the light that is approaching the boundary undergoes reflection and stays inside the original material. There's a few terms or phrases I'd like you to pay attention to in this definition. First, the word all. Total, 100%. It's a total internal reflection. The second word is the word reflection. Light doesn't reflect and refract when there's TIR going on. Instead, it's total reflection. And the third term is the term stays inside. The light stays internal or inside of the original material. It's a total internal reflection. This phenomenon can occur whenever two conditions are met. First of all, the light must be in the more dense material heading towards the less dense material. In other words, we observed it when light was in the water heading towards the less dense air. But when we, when we talked about the situation of light and air approaching water, we did not talk about total internal reflection. The first requirement is the light must be in the more dense material heading towards the less dense material. And the second requirement is that the angle of incidence must be sufficiently large. We observed total internal reflection when the light was approaching the boundary with the air at 70 degrees, but not at 45 degrees because 45 degrees was not sufficiently large. Now the phrase sufficiently large is a little nebulous, so let's put a little more detail to sufficiently large. I mean that the angle of incidence must be greater than some critical angle value. The critical angle will be calculated in our next video. For now, let's just talk about a few values for critical angle. For the air-water boundary, the critical angle is about 49 degrees. For the air-glass boundary, it's about 41 degrees, and about 24 degrees for the air to diamond, air and diamond boundary. For the glass-water boundary, it's 61 degrees. The fact is, the critical angle is a different angle depending upon what the actual boundary is. Once calculated, you know that TIR will occur when the light is in the more dense material and approaching the boundary and an angle of incidence greater than the critical angle. Here's a practice problem to see if you understand the two criteria for total internal reflection. Pause the video, read the question, answer it, and when you're ready, press play, and I'll discuss the answer. The answer to your practice problem is A. We can rule out case B because the light is in the less dense material and heading towards the more dense material. In case C, the light is in the more dense material and heading towards the less dense material, but the angle of incidence appears to be 30 degrees, which is less than the critical angle. In the case of A, the light is in the more dense material and heading towards the less dense material and has an angle of incidence of about 60 degrees greater than the critical angle.
It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a Minds on Physics mission and a Concept Builder, both of which make great practice. You have a simulation that allows you to play and manipulate a variable, and you have a tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.